Hey friends, welcome back to the Finding Joy in Your Home podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Balmay, and it is that time of year again. We are talking about curriculum, homeschool, choices, and really how to evaluate your needs for next year. So we're going to talk about like, how do you brainstorm and come up with what do we need to change? What do we want to keep? How do I find new curriculum? Today, I'm not going to be talking about specific curriculum, but rather for every family, how do we go through kind of this evaluation process? So today's episode is going to be nice and hands-on. Every year, well, mostly every year, I think, I tend to do an episode where I kind of break down the curriculum that we used last year, what we're using for next year. So I will do that in the next couple of episodes. So that's what we're going to dive into. Uh, In a little while, we're going to hear from our two sponsors for today's episode. We have Mosh and AquaTrue. So we'll we'll share about them. Uh, Really fast, though, before we dive in, I did want to remind you guys that our super amazing, incredible project is finally here that we've been teasing for two months. It is called the Joyful Home app. And it's a real, actual app. It is not like somebody else's thing that you download and sign into. It is our app. You can search for it in the Apple Store and soon the Google Play Store. (laughs) It's called Joyful Home. Uh, We're just having some troubles with Google. It should be up here any second. That's what we keep saying. And it just still keeps getting delayed. Google has got some issues, Um, but it's coming. It's coming on Google and you can fully access it on the web as well. You don't have to download it as an app. The website is gorgeous and amazing. Just go to Joyful Home app dot com. In fact, that's where you're going to sign up. Joyfulhomeapp.com. You can go check it out. It has all of the courses we've ever done, all of our uh, online conferences we've ever done. Now, they're not all in there yet. Jason is working his tail off getting those uploaded. And pretty much every week you're going to see more and more stuff getting popped in there. But it's, it has audiobooks of ours, Jason's original books. I mean, this thing is jam packed and the stuff that's in there right now is actually only a fraction of what's going to be in there. But with this new Joyful Home app, really our heart is to bring resources to families. So there's tons of homemaking stuff. I mean, all the things we've ever done here in this ministry, but we're also going to be developing more resources for kids and for husbands as well. Uh, and you can, with your one, with your one subscription, you can access it. Your entire family can access it on all of their devices. You have one sign in and you can sign in across all devices, which is amazing. Like it has to be family friendly in that case. So you can download it and be watching, you know, um, You can watch uh, homemaking conference videos on your uh, iPad or on your um, on your iPhone app. Your kids can have the iPad and have the app downloaded and listen to the audiobooks. My kids just finished listening to the Winnie the Pooh volume one on there, which is really fun. We have our Sterling Spectacles books the kids can listen to on audio. Your husband can have it downloaded on his Android phone and listen to the Christian classic books we have in there. So it really is uh, a family app. And we're going to be beefing up those resources for kids and husbands as well, because it's already got 50 bajillion resources for you. Um, So it is awesome. Go check it out through. I actually need to change this because when I first originally said this date, I was completely forgetting that this was Easter. So through April 2nd, Through April 2nd, you can get 25% off on the lifetime of your subscription uh, by using the coupon code JOYFULHOME. Use Joyful Home, get 25% off either your monthly or your annual, and that will apply forever for the length of your subscription. So like month after month, you'll get 25% off, not just your first month. So go check it out, joyfulhomeapp.com, and you can use that coupon code Joyful Home. Okay, so let's dive into this. Now, this is definitely, we're a little early. It's only March. We are currently in this year's school still. So if this is like stressing you out to even think about next year, You can just hit pause. You can come back and listen to this in July or whenever you're ready. But this really is the time to start talking about curriculum. Uh, Lots of homeschool uh, companies are having sales right now. This is when all a lot of the big homeschool conventions are kicking off in March. I've already seen like three or four around the country and they will continue through July or so. But this is the time when people are really starting to evaluate their school needs. And I think it is really smart to do it now because you are in the thick of this year. So it can feel a little scary, like trying to tackle next year's stuff while you're still in this year. But it also gives you a really good perspective because you're in the trenches now with this year trying to evaluate 
What are our needs for next year? I saw a meme recently. I can never remember like the exact wording, but it was really funny. It was a meme that I saw this last week that was like, who else is in that stage where you want to ignore wrapping up this year because this year's no longer fun and you're kind of done with this year? Who wants to ignore this year and start planning next year's curriculum? Like who else is in that phase? And I'm like, that's me. I that is me right now. <laughs> so uh, I, wh why we're talking about this is it is a good time of year. And I actually have to get my stuff planned out right now. And so this is literally the stuff I've been working on this week. I just did a, a couple curriculum orders and we have got our entire plan for next year already done. I have everything bought except for one thing. So I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling on top of it. Now, the reason for this for us this year is there's a bit more urgency. Um, we are now, if you listen to last, I think it was last week's episode, we are now moving out of this home in June. Between now and June, we are also going to be taking a trip um, for a funeral in California. And we're in Oklahoma. So it's going to be a big trip. And, and then we're moving out in June. And then we are having a baby in August. So what my current plan is, we're going to see because I know we're going to end up taking off a lot of June uh, for moving and getting, getting everything done. So right now in March, I'm trying to be real diligent on school. Like we are not slacking at all right now. We're, we're full steam ahead right now. So my plan is... We are going to wrap up. We're almost done with this year's subjects. We're doing really good. I, I'm God is good, though. God is good because I didn't know that this spring. I, I didn't mean didn't even know a month and a half ago that this spring was going to be quite so crazy. And I apologize if you're listening, watching on the video. My light just died. So I'm sorry if this lighting is terrible now. We're just going to roll with it, though. <laughs> um, so I had no idea even a month and a half ago that this spring and early summer was going to be as crazy as it was. But we've been ahead this year, which like, when does that ever happen? But God is very good because now we need that extra time. <laughs> God knew what we were coming up with this this spring and summer. So we're ahead. We're going to be wrapping up this year's subjects very soon in the next couple of weeks. And my plan is we're just going to steamroll right into next year's subjects. And then we're going to school throughout the summer until first or second week of August. We're going to have this baby, I think, the third week of August. Um we, we have C-sections. That's why I can say with confidence when, <laughs> when it will probably be. Um, and so I'm already planning that. And then we can take an extended break after baby's born um, because it's, you know, right at the beginning of the school year. So I really had to kind of get all my stuff planned out so that we could just seamlessly like have the next books to pick up. We're almost done with one of their language arts books. So I just got those in the mail yesterday. So now I can just pick those up and we'll just start the next lesson like you know, if we end that on Wednesday, on Thursday, we'll start the next lesson. So for this year, it's going to work out really well, which is also one of the things I love about homeschooling is that flexibility. So as I've been doing this, Jason, I've had a lot of conversations the last couple of weeks, a lot of figuring things out, and I've been doing a lot of research on curriculum because we are changing up a couple of things. And I always just kind of like to research what's out there and make sure we like our plan as it is. So in the next couple of weeks, I'll share those specifics of what we're going to be using. Um, but today I want to talk about that process of how do you start to evaluate what do we, what do we even need? What's what's working? What isn't working? Um, what can we add? All of that. Because I think a lot of us get overwhelmed at that step, right? So I have, how many steps? I have six steps for you, all right? Six steps. And really this was just me sitting down and going, how, what, how do I do this? Like reverse engineering, how do we go through this process? So step number one. Step number one is to take a really honest look at this year, this year that you're currently in. And if you're listening to this later, you're listening to this in July, you know, you're, you're looking back over this past year, right? So what I encourage you to start with when we're brainstorming is to start with the negative because then we're going to get to the positive. So first start with what has not worked well this year. With homeschooling, I will say, that it can be very discouraging. There are definitely days where you, I mean, I have felt before, this is where I like being able to talk to Jason because he has more of a voice of reason. Um, I have felt before where you get to the point where you're like, everything's terrible. It's all bad. It's all, you know, it's uh, everything's falling apart. And Jason's like, what are you talking about? Like these five subjects are fine. You're just struggling here. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's true. <laughs> like you can get to that point where you feel like nothing is good. 
And so this is not an exercise to feel down on yourself, to feel, you know, terrible. I mean, we've had years where it really was like, we got to change everything next year. We got to brainstorm and figure it out. So if you're in that place, that's okay. It's okay to recognize what we've been doing hasn't worked. Um, it, we don't like the curriculum. I, I lack self-discipline. The kids lack self-discipline um, or, or seasons change and you realize what you were using is no longer working. That's okay. Own that, recognize that, uh, realize it's not a failure. It's just part of this process of learning and growing. Um, I do things way better now than I used to with homeschool. Guess what? It's called progress. And I'm sure in five years, I'm going to look back and go, oh, I've progressed in these areas. So just be real honest, though. What has not worked well this year? So for us, our biggest sticking point as we're heading out, the, rounding out the end of this year, is that our the way that we're doing math this year has not worked for any of the five kids. And it kind of has been a developing problem. And I think there's a few different reasons for it. Um, we'll get into what, what we're switching to in the next episode. Um, but math just has not been working. And so that's, we got to a point where we're, and it, and it the way we've done math has worked for years previous, but we're hitting a point where the curriculum has changed um, and it just is no longer serving us well. And we realized this is not working. We need, to, we need to make a shift and a pivot for next year, which I wasn't really expecting with math. We were pretty settled with math. Um, and so that's fine. I can look at that and I can recognize math has been our sticking point this year. And so that, that's the one big thing I can identify, okay? So really, really think it through. What has not worked well for you? Now, on the flip side, we wanna spend some time really thinking about what has worked well. So I actually do think our year has gone fairly smooth and now that I've gone through this whole evaluation process, I feel really proud of this year. I feel like we've done a lot of good things and we've had some good success with trying some new curriculum, which curriculum can be hit or miss. Well, actually, I will say we're not going to we tried a new history curriculum for this year. And I wouldn't say it was like a failure, but we're not using it again. It's not our favorite, you know. And so that's definitely a shift that I was like, OK, we're figuring something new out for history. Um, but a couple weeks ago, I was a little bit more like, it's all terrible. It's all horrible. <laughs> Everything's bad and math's taking too long. And Jason's like, okay, remember we added, you know, our new history while we didn't like the curriculum, our new history routine has worked really well. Um, our new language arts and writing program has worked so well. You know, he started pointing out the things that have been going well. Um, all of the kids are stronger readers than they were at the beginning of the year. You know, things that are really, really easy to forget, you know, between September and May, it's really easy to forget the progress that you have made, the good things that have happened. So I really want you to spend some time thinking through what are the positives from this year? What has worked well? What are some things that you're like, yeah, everybody's a stronger reader or um, or his handwriting has improved? Like really think through those positive things. And that's going to help you figure out too what you need to bring into next year. And it'll also give you some encouragement too when you're kind of trying to tear apart your routines, <laughs> which can be hard. So step one, look at what didn't work. Look at what did work. Just be honest. You don't need to come up with solutions yet, but just say math didn't work. Okay. Now in step two, I want you to start researching the areas that went wrong. Now, there's a few different, you know, moms can fall into a few different categories, a few different personalities as homeschool moms. There is no right or wrong, but be really honest with who you are. Don't try to fit a mold you see online. Don't try to fit the mold you see of your friend doing. Um, because if you try to step into someone else's personality as a homeschool mom, what I think it leads to is just complete and utter overwhelm. Uh, so for some, and I have a lot of friends who are like this, I would say this is probably the more normal, um, more common, is if you're you're like, okay, we need to switch math. Go talk to a few of your homeschool mom friends or post in a forum that you're in. If you're like in a good homeschool forum on Facebook, if you don't have any friends in real life that homeschool, um, ask ask a few friends like say, hey, what do you guys use for math? What do you like? Or we used um, th such and such math. We didn't like it. Who else has been in that boat? What do you like? What did you switch to? Um, you know, get a couple of recommendations, do a little poking around and then just pick one like pick one. You maybe you're the type that doesn't need all the all the, you know, if you put 45 different math curriculums in front of you, you're going to be so overwhelmed the you know, analysis paralysis, you're not going to pick one. So make it simple, know your personality and do some research. Whatever that research looks like for you to figure out 
the new avenue you want to go to. And it never hurts to talk to other homeschool moms. You're going to get so much good advice. Um, and no matter kind of what your personality is, asking other moms and friends, what did you use? What do you like? Um, may not work for you, but you're going to also glean a lot of good stuff. Now, the second, if you're extra, like Jamie is, what I do is <laughs> I like to research every single option that's out there. So I have looked at 45 different <laughs> math programs. Um, I like to download samples. I like to compare. I like to I like to ask people too, people's opinions. Um, but I'm definitely one that's like, well, I'm gonna do my own research too. Um, and I know that's really, really, really ridiculously overwhelming to a lot of people. And I don't think you need to do that. It's just my personality. It's who I am. I'm not going to be happy picking something until I have personally done that research. Um, and so for me, picking a math curriculum means I deep dived into math curriculums for like a month. I was watching YouTube videos. And I know, that's way more than most people care to do. And in fact, that process would be really stressful to some people. For me, it's stress relieving. Like I couldn't just look at two curriculum and just pick one without knowing all the things. Like I just couldn't. That would be more stressful to me. So be really honest with who you are, how your personality is, and then dive into that research, however it looks for you, to figure out a solution for the area that's not working. So if you're a child, we've had some readers struggle <clears throat> for several years. And that is a great area to get on a forum, Facebook group, ask your friends and say, I'm, I'm really having a struggling reader. This is the program we've used. Who's got some suggestions? And you're gonna get some really, really good suggestions. Uh, one of my favorite things to do then is to look up, um, let's say your friend's like, oh, we love all about reading. Go to Kathy Duffy. Her reviews are fantastic. Go to Kathy Duffy and look up all about reading and read Kathy Duffy's review. She gets a really good, honest look at pros and cons and who, which children this might be good for, pricing, um, a really, really good without being too much. It's like one page without it being too overwhelming. Um, so go do that. Go look up all about reading, you know, and do a little bit of research in that way. But it's really easy to feel like, oh, my kid is struggling in reading. I don't know what to do. And you kind of stop there. And then we stop without looking for the solutions of what we can try next. So that step number two is to research the areas that have not been running smoothly. Now, step three, I think this is really important. I know this won't apply to everybody, but this can be a very important step is to get your husband's input and suggestions. So I really think that often husbands are one step removed from the emotion, from the, from the hard work of the day. Um, and sometimes they might very well be able to see a problem or problem areas or um, be able to pinpoint a problem that you can't see because you're so close to it. So not all husbands are involved in curriculum choices, um, but I do think that husbands should be when they can be. So especially if you have sons, your husband's input really, really is needed with, um, especially as they get older, middle school, high school, having your your husband's input um, into maybe your high school son doesn't need to study butterflies all day. Maybe he needs to get out and do some woodworking. You know, your husband may have some really valuable advice because as women, it's very easy for us to make our curriculum choices on the more feminine side, right? It makes sense. Um, so having your husband's involvement, even at that level, I think is really helpful. And husbands can be, you know, anybody on the outside. If it's your, if your mother-in-law or your mother is involved in your homeschooling days, ask her input. She may, it might not be what you want to hear, but it might be what you need to hear. They might have some valuable advice to say, well, it seems like you're saying the math curriculum doesn't work, but yet you're not very consistent with it. You know, there might be some hard truths that you go, yeah, like I it absolutely in our homeschooling, there have been times where the failure is my personal lack of self-discipline. It just, it just is. And that's something as a homeschool mom, I have to grow in and, and learn. And, you know, we're not perfect and we're going to we're going to try every day to <laughs> get better at things. Um, but having an outsider's perspective it really can be helpful sometimes. All right, now, step four. Before you hop online or go to your curriculum store, before you purchase your new curriculum, before you jump in, put a schedule together. This is really gonna save you. So what you wanna do is you wanna say, okay, I think I've picked our five curriculum that we're gonna use. Look at each one. 
Most of them will tell you, you know, this, you know, this history lesson is supposed to be done in 20 minutes a day or 60 minutes a day. It might take you a little bit more or less, but it gives you kind of a ballpark. And then make an actual schedule and say, at, and, and based on a lot of times when we're planning for the next year, we can be like, well, we're going to start math at seven o'clock exactly. But like you've never started school before 10 a.m. Don't do that. Be really realistic. And maybe one of your goals is you want to move school up a little bit or you want to become a little bit more self-disciplined. Do it in increments. Don't try to tackle it all at once or it's not going to work. Um, we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, start slow, but you want to build a real, realistic schedule. So say, OK, this history says it's going to take an hour. That's eight to nine. OK, then we're going to leave 15 minutes because you need some transitions, uh, 930 to 1030, we're doing math. Really build it out and see if your curriculum choices are realistic or not. I get really excited. You guys can probably tell from my personality. I get really excited. I want to do all the things all the time. It's not realistic. It's not happening. And so I have to make sure that I'm very realistic with the time. Uh, am I really being realistic that we can get this all accomplished? Because if I buy all this new curriculum and we can never get it accomplished, even if I'm doing well in certain areas, I'm going to feel like a failure because we're never getting to all this extra stuff. So be really clear on what your priorities are for this year. Um, and what we've kind of had too is you can't focus on all the things all the time every single day ever. You can't do Shakespeare and poetry and art study and your math. You know, you can't do absolutely everything all the time. So we tend to have either years or seasons or a couple of months or a month where we're kind of focused on a different thing. So about three years ago, all five of the older kids really needed to work on reading. Like before we could get into more independent studies and, you know, more writing, we needed to get everybody's, well, mostly, almost everybody's reading levels up. So that year, my absolute biggest focus was reading. And this was when they were younger. And I mean, at most, a lot of my morning was spent doing one-on-one -on -one reading assignments with each kid. And that's what I had to do. Part of that's because our five older kids are only four years apart in age. So it, it was just a lot when it was like two kindergartners, two second graders, a preschooler, it, it, it we needed to kind of take it in lumps. Right. So we really focused on that on um, we need to focus on reading like this year. Our focus is reading. We still had math and other things, but that took a bulk of our time. Then the next year, once we were like, oh, OK, that, that paid off. We really focused on writing and handwriting and getting everybody really up to snuff on that in sentences. And like it just kind of was like our year of focus. We're taking a much more concentrated time on writing. So there's definitely times where you're like, hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> we got to like we got to have a focus area for our year or for our month or for a concentrated time. So be really realistic with what that is. Put your schedule together and then evaluate if it's realistic or not. If you have subjects going from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, all day long with a 10 minute break in between, probably not realistic. You need to pair back on some things or think through if there's maybe some different ways you can do things or cycle out um, different subjects. So we do Shakespeare study, poetry, music appreciation, art history, uh, which sounds so overwhelming, but they each take like maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day. But we rotate those out. We're not doing every single one of those every day. So putting that realistic schedule together, evaluating it from there and then ordering your curriculum. And a lot of times we go straight to like, we get all excited and order all this curriculum and it is not a realistic plan, <laughs> right? Okay, step five. It is absolutely 100% okay and even wise, some of us need to hear this, to slowly ease into new subjects. This is the approach that I have now taken in the last few years and it has been just absolutely life-changing to our school. So on September 1st or whatever day you start school for the year, it's really easy to think that like start, you know, most of us, most of you listening, not everybody. Jason was homeschooled kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, some of you are much more familiar with homeschool. But a lot of us who were just raised in public school, you have all summer off, you do nothing. And then, bam, you go back to school. First day of school, you have all your subjects. You're, you're back into everything. But. With homeschooling, especially when you're introducing new topics, new curriculum, you as the teacher have to figure all this out. Um, my uh, texts are on on my laptop. <laughs> 
Um, when when you're doing that, it is really hard sometimes to be like, actually, we're changing everything this year and we're starting everything new on the first day. And then you're sitting there on the first day of school scratching your head because you're looking at the teacher's manual and you're like, wait a minute. I'm not fully prepared for this or, you know, um, it can just be hard to ease into all these new subjects or to jump into all the new subject at once. So I really want to encourage you. We have the flexibility as homeschoolers ease into some of these new things. So for us, for this year, we did this and I was really happy with how it turned out. So we wanted to we used this year kind of as a year of like really wanting to beef up some of our subjects. We went through a year of focusing on reading, focusing on writing. Everybody's doing really good on that. And now it's like, oh, we can jump into beefier stuff like stuff's getting more serious. We'd had um, two fifth graders, two third graders second grader and then the two littles um and so everybody's just getting into more bigger stuff like they can handle more so i really want i was like i want to beef stuff up this year but we didn't jump in with everything and all the new changes at once and i'm really glad we did and i think that was part of our success this year so we did start a new history program that was much more robust than we've ever done and so we started with that at the uh, sometime in september maybe we started earlier I don't remember, but we started it. We, we eased into it. Um, we jumped fully into that and it gave us a couple of months to like really get that down into a routine. And we had that solid routine. We had our other subjects going as well, but that was the first new big thing to change. The next thing we wanted to change was to introduce for the four older boys um, a much more rigorous, like creative writing, um, writing program of like really getting them ready for middle school, like bigger writing, right? Which as a teacher takes a lot of time from me. And so we did all the comparisons and everything. And we figured we landed on a writing program that you use in conjunction with their language arts program. And so it was kind of a big deal to jump into both of this. And I was feeling a little bit nervous of finding the time to do it. And so we waited until the history was fully in the routine. And then we started the language arts in writing. So by that point, it only felt like I was adding in one new thing. Everything else was kind of more or less on autopilot. And we're able to add that one thing in or two things, I guess. And so that was really, really helpful to do. So you look at, too, if you've got some goals of, oh, we'd like to add some art, art history or art appreciation or anything you kind of want to add in. You don't have to do it day one. Look at and we've done that where we add we had goals. We were like, by this month, we want to add in the language arts. By this month, it's the history. And we kind of just had goals throughout the year, goal posts of when we wanted to add it in. So I really encourage you to do that, especially adding in maybe extra or beefier things. All right. Now, step six. Last thing is do not get overloaded. Okay, some of us are over here where we're going to get real overloaded real overwhelmed with the fact that there are 50 bajillion homeschool curriculums out there now you can use, right? Or this is me over here. uh, And I have so many friends who are like this. And I totally sympathize to that of just getting so like deer in the headlights. There's so much to choose from. I don't even know how to to take one the next step, right? My problem is some of you are like this. I get way too overexcited about all the new curriculum and then I wanna buy everything and all the things and all of that, right? So don't fall into either of those camps. Don't do it, don't do it. Um, Picking one program means you're not using another program. So whether you're in the overwhelm because you don't wanna make a mistake, you don't wanna choose the wrong thing, um, you don't have time to research all the different options and it feels too hard and overwhelming, or you get excited and like, there's like three different writing programs that look amazing to me. Like, (laughs) I wanna do all three. Well, duh, you're not. So you're gonna be picking one and that's okay. Don't stress over what other people are using. Um, Use what works well for you. download. I mean, I've used curriculum before that people are just like, it's amazing. And I try it and we don't like it. There's other curriculum I use that no one's ever heard of before. That's completely fine. Use what works well for you. Make those decisions. We take it year by year. So you jump into this great new curriculum looks so awesome. You guys don't end up liking it. That's okay. It is okay to do that. Um, But we can get so scared of failure, of picking the wrong thing. Um, And it can get overwhelming. There's so many options. So try not to get overloaded. Try not to get overexcited. Find somewhere kind of in the middle. Um, Make your choice and be okay with it. Be okay with it, right? So my last word of help to you that goes totally along those lines is don't be afraid 
of ditching curriculum that just is not working for you. We have done this. There are times where that is the right and necessary thing to do. So midway through this year, the math curriculum we were using for Magnolia, who's in second grade, was working fine at the beginning of the year. I'll tell you guys in the next episode. There's a whole long saga of it. But for all the reasons, it we just we got to the point where it was not working. It was tears. It was I hate math. Uh, and she's really good at math. Like it's not, you know, she she was fine. It just the curriculum was not working. And I was not really fully realizing it was the curriculum until I started really looking up reviews and going, oh, should we switch? And realizing, oh, a lot. Oh, that's the problem we're having. Like it was kind of a light bulb to go. Yep, that's the problem we're having. I see it. So I actually midway through the year, it's hard to do with math. I pulled what she was doing. I bought a brand new book. I started her over on that level of level two, um, which was really easy for her at the beginning, which is what I wanted. I wanted her to feel confident and happy. And like about a week ago, she keeps asking me, mom, can we do math? And a week ago, she was like, mom, I love math. I mean, this is a 180 from two months ago. And so it was absolutely the right decision, even though it was hard to do. It was hard to do. It was the right decision for her. Now, on the flip side, homeschool moms, we struggle with this. Don't expect that the next curriculum is automatically going to solve all your problems. Um, It is so much easier to switch to a new curriculum and go, oh, this looks fun and exciting. You know, we get all motivated and excited when we're ordering new curriculum. So much easier to do that than it is to address discipline, discipline problems in yourself or in your kids. And so sometimes... It's not the curriculum. Sometimes it's that our children don't want to do math and that there are tears. And, (laughs) you know, uh, sometimes it's just it's it's, yo, we we don't like this history program. We can't get through it. No, it's because you need to just get through it. Right. There's still there's totally those times, too. And it's really, really easy as a homeschool mom to get FOMO fear of missing out of all the other beautiful curriculum that are out there. And I follow a lot of homeschooling accounts on Instagram. And it's so easy to be like, whoa. And new people are coming out with new curriculum all the time. It's so easy to be like, that is amazing. Um, I want to try it. And so the the fear for many of us is we're trying to switch curriculum too much all the time because we're like this new cool thing when really we just need to be disciplined, get through the books we have, stick with it. School is not always fun and bright and shiny and incredible and new discoveries every day. Sometimes we kind of just got to work through the book, have that self-discipline. Um, and so we want to we want to hold it in balance, though. There are times to ditch it. There are times when it doesn't work for our family. The curriculum's just terrible or it doesn't work for you. And then there's other times where you're like, we just need to stick through like this history program. We're not loving it this year, um, but we're sticking through. We're going to finish out this year, but we're not going to continue on. We already have the new history we're going to do, and I'm. I'm, ho- I'm optimistic about it. I'm excited for it. Um, and so, yeah, there's times for both of those. All right. So that is my very long spiel. I have texts popping up on my laptop like crazy. I don't know. Oh, it's our family chat <laughs> text that's like blowing up right now. Um, so 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 that's just kind of my steps. That's what I really think through. Um, I would love to hear from you guys on what your evaluation process is. If you have some things that you like to kind of go through, um, if you have checklists, I get really, really excited. And I, you, I think a lot of people assume that I'm a type A, like hyper organized type A, because I do have some characteristics like researching all the options and making spreadsheets and getting excited. But I'm actually completely type B, a very creative personality. Um, That's why I think I actually like looking at all the different choices, but I'm not hyper organized and I would, I, I like to learn ways to become more organized. So I know some of you listening are like, oh, I literally have like this five. I mean, I just gave you, I did just give you six steps, but that was just going, how do I do this? Like, I'm going to reverse engineer it. But some of you have some really great systems that you use. Um, I would I would love to hear it. I'd love to hear from other homeschool moms. It's the best way. I mean, almost everything I've ever learned is from reading things, you know, listening to podcasts, talking to moms in real life, learning from each other on what we do, because we all have different personalities and different households and different children and different husbands, different circumstances. So getting to learn and hear from each other is super fun. That's why I think um, next week's episode, if I do it next week, on breaking down all my curriculum, those are always such a popular episode because I love watching those. I love seeing what other people are using and their thought process. Uh, I just think it's super fun. So share with us what you've done or what your um, 
your uh, your evaluation process um or maybe you don't have one maybe you're like yeah we just kind of i go to the homeschool the homeschool convention and see what they have there which that's actually a really great idea too. So, okay, I'm gonna be done chatting now. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to check out um, our brand new app at joyfulhomeapp.com. You can use the coupon code joyfulhome through April 2nd for 25% off your monthly subscription, or it actually applies to the annual too, which we may have shot ourselves in the foot a little bit with that because we've had so many annual signups. <laughs> the annual plan already gives you two months free and it gives you 25% on top of that, it's a really good deal. And next year when it renews, you'll get 25% off again because it just will apply forever. So I was like, hmm, I didn't maybe quite think through, through that, but that means that all of our founding members this month are gonna get a really, really <laughs> awesome price, which is awesome. Uh, so go check it out, joyfulhomeapp.com. Use that coupon code Joyful home. We will have, we have a homeschool conference that's going to be loaded on there really soon. Um, and we're going to have more homeschool resources in the future that are going to be on there as well. If you're specifically interested in homeschool, as well as homemaking and all the different things. All right, ladies, thank you so much for joining in and we'll see you guys back here next week for the next episode.